All right, um, in this next video here um, for the Stormworks Basic Modular Engine tutorial, we're going to go through, and uh, we left off, we have the engine up and running, and so we're going to go through, we're going to make it automate the clutch, and uh, we're going to make it so that when we put the throttle forwards, it's going to rev up the engine, engage the clutch to make the prop turn so we can go forwards. When we bring the throttle back to idle, it will disengage the clutch and um, have our engine go down to idle. Uh, when we bring the throttle into reverse, it's going to rev up the engine, engage the clutch, and switch the gearbox to reverse. So let's go into our microcontroller. All right, I'm going to name this microcontroller now. We'll do it um, Stormworks Basics uh, Modular Tutorial. Okay. So. Um, we're going to need to add a gear in there for reverse. So we'll go logic, add a node, put the node there. Uh, it'll be an output boolean on off, and that's going to be gear. All right. So let's go over here. We'll start. We'll have that. All right. Um, next thing we're going to also need is a clutch. So let's go back. We'll put a clutch in. So that's going to be a number, an output, and that will be clutch. Okay. So now we have clutch. All right, let's grab the clutch. All right, so let's start working with the clutch first. All right, so we want to make this clutch automated. So for those, you know, so we talked a little bit about how, how a clutch works. It takes the power from the engine and it transfers it slowly to the output shaft to whatever you're driving, a wheel or a propeller. Um, if you were to use an on-off switch and you would turn the clutch from zero to one instantly, it would stall the engine. You want to gently and slowly bring it in. So we can do that with some logic so we don't have to manually do it. And so we need to, uh, we can use our RPS, and at a certain RPS, the engine becomes viable to produce enough torque that we won't stall the engine. So um, we know 2 is when the engine's running, 2.5 is when our starter comes on, so we're going to want a number higher than that. So let's start around 4, so 4 RPS. All right, so we'll just put a note here for, um, all right, so that's 4, so constant number 4. And we're going to want to do a greater than. All right, so this is essentially saying if the um, RPS is greater than 4, we want to start adding clutch. All right, and if the RPS, so we could put a less than, but if we just do a not, this will, this will tell us that if the RPS is not greater than 4, we can reduce the clutch. All right, so what we can use is an up-down counter. And let's make this a small number, like 0.1. Remember, if it holds it, it will slowly increase that clutch. Reset is zero. We want zero clutch for reset. We'll enable the clamp. Zero is no clutch. One is full clutch. All right, so if the RPS is greater than four, all right, we want to add clutch. If the, um, we also want an and in here. So let's put and, and. All right, so if the RPS is greater than four, and so we uh, so that will do it if the engine's revved high enough, we'll add clutch. But we also only want to add clutch when we want to go forwards. So if this number is greater than zero, so let's take the greater than, copy it and paste it. So if the number we put in from our throttle is greater than zero, we also that's the other condition we want. So we need these two conditions. So we need this and this. And we'll go here to the up-down counter to increase our throttle. All right. If, um, if, the, um, if the RPS is not greater than 4, i.e. lower than 4, we want to decrease the uh, clutch. All right. So that allows us to reduce our clutch if we're um, going to stall. All right, we'll leave the reset um, idle for now. We won't mess with the reset. All right, we'll send that to the clutch. All right, so this is going to automate our clutch. So if we um, start to increase our throttle and it gets above 4 RPS and our throttle is past the, um, is, pa is greater than zero, i.e. we're trying to go, f go forwards, it's then going to increase clutch. All right. All right, so let's um, let's work with this first, and then we'll actually do reverse afterwards. All right, so let's update. Let's connect our nodes. So we have our clutch. Clutch is going to go to the clutch. Um, we're not. We uh, we can connect gear now. We haven't set up the gear yet. Um, 
we were we were playing with two to one. Let's go negative one. That will be a reverse. All right, and let's um, let's see how this works. All right, so we have our engine here. So we're gonna sit in our seat. Press six. Engine's up and running. So now I'm gonna start to increase the um, throttle. We're gonna listen if we have a starter noise. If we have a starter noise, it means we're um, engaging our clutch too quickly, um, and we're stalling our engine. If we don't have it then we could probably um, engage the clutch more quickly so we don't stall. All right, so you hear how it's, it keeps having to do the starter? Well, we're actively stalling our motor. Now, as you can hear, it did like four or five restarts, um, and now it's engaging the thing. So we're putting our clutch in too fast. All right, so this is like in a car. If you were to just dump the clutch and let go of the clutch pedal really quick, you'd stall the car. So the same thing's happening here. And so the way we change is we go to our clutch up down counter and we decrease the rate. So we're at point one now. Let's go point eight. All right, so we're reducing the how fast we uh, put that clutch in. All right, so let's six to start. We'll start to increase it. All right, so it's still um, having a restart. So let's, we'll uh, decrease this number even more. So let's go to, um, we'll go quite a bit smaller. So we'll go 0.02. All right, if if we need to, we can uh, increase that back up. And so what we're doing is we're essentially, uh, we're taking our, we're adding clutch more slowly when we do that, the smaller the number is. All right, so the engine's on. We're gonna start to increase the throttle. All right, so as you can see, it's adding the, um, it's automatically adding the clutch and it's um, turning the propeller. If I hit uh, three, which is idle, it's going to automatically idle the engine. Let's make sure it, um, it still has the clutch engaged, which it shouldn't if we hit three. So we need to fix that. So when I go to idle, it should uh, idle the clutch. So let's look at that and also see why it's doing that. So we're still uh, we're still putting the clutch in too quickly. So let's go point zero to one. All right, so we, we need to see why um, our clutch is not zeroing. Um, so let's do, when we idle, we want that to reset our clutch. All right. Let's try that now. So we did two things. We slowed down the clutch application and we also when we are at when we hit our idle, it will um, zero our clutch. So let's jump at our seat. Six. Alright, let's listen, see if we hear the clutch the uh, engine restart noise as we're applying clutch. Alright, so you hear no no uh, restart noise, so we didn't stall at all there. All right, so we can actually probably uh, put in the clutch even faster. So now let's hit idle, three key. All right, and that clutch should zero, it is. Okay, good. So we can actually increase the speed at which we uh, put on the clutch because as you heard, we didn't have any restart noise. So we're at uh, point zero zero one. Let's do point zero zero um, what were we at last time? I think we we're at we we're close to there. So let's go 0 0.005. Now remember, it's trying to it's holding that button, so it's putting it in more quickly. So let's hit six. Let's add in our throttle. Okay, so here we had one restart, so that's putting in the clutch too fast. Okay. So let's uh, put our clutch in a little slower. Now remember that with that gearbox set to two to one, that's putting more load on the engine. So that was a little bit high, so let's reduce it. It wasn't that high, so let's put it to take one number off. So we wanna get it right to the point where it doesn't make that restart noise at all. Okay, six. Okay, so there it is, it's applying it. We got one restart noise, I'll reduce it again, but um, let's start working on the the reverse. So we hit three to idle it, let's go back in the workbench. So I'm gonna reduce that number even further. 
All right, again, we're just changing how fast we put in the, um, let's go 2, 5. All right, so now let's work on our reverse. So we want to, um, we want, when we go below 0 on our throttle, we want it to automatically um, put in the clutch and put it in reverse gear so that we can go backwards. Now, we need to do some things for this, right? So we never want our RPS to go negative because that would shut our engine off, right? If we had negative air and negative fuel, right, the engine's going to shut off. So what we need to do is we need to put in a numerical switch box. All right. So if you look at a numerical switch box, we have our signal switch, we have our second value off, and we have our first value on. So if we don't turn the button on, this signal comes through here and out. When we turn the button on, this signal will go through. All right, so what we want to do is we want to go to our throttle here on our up-down counter. We want to take this and we want to send it to the PID. All right, let's actually move this a little bit over here. Okay, and we'll put that right there. All right, now we're going to add a function. All right, so let's move it a little closer. So let's add a function, all right, and let's put a negative x. So what that means is whenever we have a negative number, that negative x is a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive, all right? So what we want to do is we want to take this number, negative x, to the switch box, all right? So that means this is going to take any positive number and make it negative, and a negative number and make it positive, all right? And so now we want to switch to this whenever this is um, less than 0. So as you can see, right here we have a, if this number is greater than 0, right? So what we can do is, instead of putting another less than there, what we'll do is we'll copy the not. So this, if this number is not greater than 0, we want to go into reverse. All right, actually, what I'm going to do, I'll do less than. That would make it so that if we had a 0, um, it would also put it in reverse. So let's do less than. All right, so if this number is less than 0, this number less than 0, we want to trigger that numerical switch box to make it positive. So the reason we do this is my negative number is going to be my reverse, but I want it to turn from a negative to a positive. So I still want to be able to bring the throttle decrease the throttle below negative to tell me to go into reverse. But I want the number to go through to the engine as a positive. All right. Now, if the throttle is less than zero, I also want it to trigger my gear so that I switch gears. Update that. All right. Now, everything should be connected. We had it connected. All right. So let's go through. We'll start this up, and we'll try to go into reverse. And we'll see if I remember to connect everything. All right, so let's see. So let's hit six. Let's go forwards first. All right, as you hear, we didn't get a starter, so that new number I put in is about perfect. All right, we're going forwards. Let's hit three. That should idle us. All right, so now the clutch is disengaged. The prop is slowing down. Let's start going in reverse. We might get a starter because the prop is still turning backwards. Well. I'm holding two. All right. So let me uh, jump off and check it. So we're going uh, eight. Remember, I set my negative value to a maximum of negative eight. Let's check here. As we can see, um, where's my RPS? RPS of eight. So um, we have the RPS A as 5.3 and the RPS B is negative. So this is turning, uh, as you can see, that's still slowing down. So let's see if it actually goes into reverse. It might, it might take until it's, uh, nope, we have no clutch. All right, so let me see what's up with the clutch. So the clutch didn't engage. So let's look at the clutch. All right. That is, okay, let me see, clutch. So I think I did something here. So if this is greater than zero, so actually I don't want that. Oh, so okay, that's fine. So see where it says greater than zero? All I'm going to do is instead of having it come from the throttle, I need that to come from the numerical switch box. All right, that should fix it. 
And the reason why, so that worked fine when we were just going forwards, but when we're going reverse now, remember, we need to be able to invert that number. The reason it wasn't applying the clutch was because I had it reading from here. So it was reading a negative 8. Well, negative 8 is not greater than 0. Negative 8 is less than 0, so it wouldn't increase our clutch. Now, because when it goes negative, it's going to give me a positive 8. That's greater than 0. It will give me clutch. So let's update that. Let's spawn it, and this should go in reverse. So let's. it might stall because that prop is going to be turning the opposite direction of the engine, but that's fine. Remember, our system auto restarts. Let's press 6. Let's go full forward. All right, so as you see, it automatically added the clutch. It's um, automatically revving up to wherever I set my throttle. All right, we're off to the races. All right, let's check our gearbox really quick. All right, so remember I had a max of about uh, 15, so it's going to try to climb up there. Remember, I have a 2 to 1 gear ratio, so as you can see, if we're making 8 RPS on the engine, it's giving us um, double that, you know, about 16, 17 here now. 18 in a second. Um, that's going to give us our um, our propeller and forwards. So our gear ratio is giving us a two to one. Now let's hit three. Remember that will idle our engine. So our engine is going to go back to idle. As you can see, it's slowing down idle. Our clutch should be zero. It is. Our gearbox is still false because we're not negative. Now let's reduce our throttle backwards, and we should um, get automatic clutch. Our RPS should go up. This gearbox should go true, putting us in reverse, and the propeller should go the other way. All right, so let's reduce it with the two key. So it's going to stall because the engine's trying to fight the prop, but now we should see the prop go backwards. And there we go. Prop is going backwards. All right, so this should go up to a maximum of 8 RPS. All right, and now we're in reverse. Now remember, our gearbox is set to one negative one, right? So we have a, um, our, right, our limiter sets us at a maximum of eight RPS, where it's seven and a half, clutch is at 100%, and because we have a one to negative one, where we have 7.47 coming out of the engine and 7.47 going to the prop. Now this is good for storm arcs because Going backwards in a boat is often, you know, you have a nice you know, flat back to the boat. It's going to pick the uh, stern up. So um, so now we have pretty much a, an engine that runs like a real boat would. You put the throttle forwards. It automatically revs the engine up. It automatically adds the clutch in. It automatically keeps the gear ratio where you want it. When you go to zero, it's going to, uh, when you hit three, it's automatically going to idle it. It's going to put the clutch to zero. And when we go um, reverse with the throttle, it's automatically going to rev the engine, add the clutch, and put the gearbox in reverse. All right, so I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. Next video, we're going to start working on um, the modular engine fluid pump for the cooling, and we will work on the alternator. See you then.